Well, the pandemic has forced us to change many of our habits, but how is it affecting our sleep? Well, for more, we're joined live by Dr. Michael Awad, Chief Medical Officer at Peak Sleep Clinic. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning, Mike. You know, I'm so happy that you're joining us to talk about this issue that really hasn't been spoken a lot about throughout the pandemic. And I'm curious, uh, from your experience, you know, the patients that had issues sleeping, I can only imagine that it's only been exacerbated by the pandemic. But I'm guessing there's a lot of new patients who have never had issues before, but given the heightened anxieties of the pandemic, they're now starting to deal with these issues. What are some of the things that you are seeing in your patients? Hi, Jamie. Nice to see you and uh, happy Thanksgiving. You know, you're absolutely right. We are seeing a spike in terms of sleep disorders during the pandemic, in particular, those related to the insomnia family of disorders, problems falling asleep, staying asleep, and people having trouble with early morning awakenings in particular. And in terms of, I guess, in treating these kind of things, I can only imagine that every patient um, is unique. Every patient requires a different treatment. What are some of the things that you're offering to uh, patients to help kind of navigate them through, a, 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 I guess, a full night's rest? Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, when we look at treating insomnia, there's this common misconception that there's a magic pill, that a sleeping tablet will ultimately fix the problem. And while sleeping medications can be helpful, they're typically indicated for shorter term use. And first line therapy for problems with uh, sleeping in, in specific uh, insomnia type disorders has now shifted more towards the realm of sleep psychology or cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, and so that's essentially the way I describe it. It's like having a personal trainer for your sleep, someone who can educate you, someone who can help you with this concept of stimulus control to begin to associate your bedroom as a calm and restful place where you can fall asleep and do not much else. So avoiding things like screens and TVs and uh, other you know, distractions and anxieties. And finally, it's also about reassociating some of those thought patterns that are associated with our sleep. And so it's really important to be working with a multidisciplinary team like the team we have at Peak Sleep that combines medical doctors with psychologists, dentists, and even surgeons to fully treat the breadth of sleep disorders. And, and Dr. Wad, tell me a little bit about the, uh, I guess, some of the, um, the consequences or some of the things that can be produced because of not getting really good rest, especially uh, when it pertains to mental health, um, increased stress, and how that could really impact you know, uh, a patient's life in general. What are some of the big implications of really having, I guess, a bad night's rest? Such a great question. The list is extensive. Everything from increased risk of cancer, strokes, heart attacks. We know there's an association with anxiety and depression when we have sleep loss or chronic sleep loss in particular. Uh, but most interestingly, during the pandemic, we know that getting a reduction in sleep can actually increase your risk of infection. It reduces immunity. And we actually know, as we're all looking forward to a vaccination coming, hopefully in the near future, that in fact, not getting enough sleep can reduce your body's ability to produce a response to a vaccine. So it's something we should all be very conscious of. And this is not just in elderly people, it's actually in young, healthy people as well. You know, full disclosure, I, I can't even say, it, it, since um, in the past year, I've noticed that I've actually gotten better sleep and I've noticed that I, I I haven't really gotten sick as much. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm getting a lot better sleep. And uh, Dr. Wad, if there's anyone out there that's watching this show right now and they're thinking, you know, I, I need to speak to someone about this because it's affecting not only my personal life, but my professional life as well. Uh, where can they go? How can they access some help? Absolutely. Well, your family doctor is a great first stop, but you can find us at www.peaksleep.ca. Uh, and like I said, we are the only uh, group of clinics in Ontario offering this multidisciplinary service. And so we're happy to be looking after the broad range of sleep disorders that are out there. I'm so happy uh, that you joined us on the show because a lot of people are probably, you know, wondering, you know, about some of the physical uh, things that are happening with their body and they might have overlooked the fact that it might be uh, connected to sleep. Dr. Michael Awad uh, from Peak Sleep Clinic, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning and have yourself a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Jamie. Sleep well. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs>